All right. So the first two say evaluate each limit. And you can't hardly read it, but it's limit as x goes to infinity. It's the function is the opposite of 2 over x squared plus 2. So you pitch your putting in infinity. Infinity squared is huge. 2 over infinity, well, that's going to be 2 over a gigantic number. It's going to go to 0. All right. And again, you can probably tell because if, as it goes to infinity, the highest order is on the bottom, thus it goes to 0. The only thing on the next one is it's polynomial. You, you know that there's no rational. It's going to get bigger as you go out to infinity. The question is, does it go to negative infinity or does it go to positive infinity? And all you have to look at is the sign of the highest order term, negative x squared. This goes to negative infinity. The number one thing is notation. For number three, it says, for each problem, find the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the given value. Guys, instantaneous rate of change is derivative, right? Change of line. So all I gotta do is get y prime, which is what, negative 4x minus 1, you guys agree? And evaluate it at negative 2. So I'm pretty sure it's 7 is the answer. Alright? Now the last one, don't overthink this. Alright? You look at it and it's y equals 4x to the fourth, alright? And your initial reaction might be, oh my gosh, it's got a lot of stuff going on. But it's really just, we know the derivative of ln u is 1 over u, right, guys? So I'm not going to do u substitution. I'm just going to go 1 over 4x to the 4th, and then derivative of 4x to the 4th is 16x cubed. Now, what confuses students often, all right, is everybody, look what I get. When I simplify, just 4 over x. Everybody, do you remember your limit, your log rules from last year? This could have been written as everybody agree? Oh, no, it couldn't have been. No, it couldn't have been. I had to pull it off. I'm sorry, I could have. Yeah, I could have. But I can pull the 4 out if I want, all right? I can write this as ln4 plus, sorry. 4 ln x, right? And what's the derivative of ln 4? ln 4 is a constant, guys, so it's zero. I mean, I was going too fast. So anyway, if you do the derivative of the blue, you get the exact same answer as the red. All right, so there's two ways to go at this problem. I personally don't even worry about the rules for logs unless I have to. So I would just take the derivative in red, but the blue derivative, doing log rules first works. All right. Next problem is an optimization. I think what I'll do today, if you guys want to follow along, I'll give you a chance to see a problem. And I don't know if this is real world or not yet. I took it from a book. A company has started selling a new type of smartphone at the price of $130 minus one tenth of a dime per X, where X is the number of smartphones manufactured today. Each phone costs $60 for parts. And it doesn't matter how many phones they make a day, it costs four grand to run the plant. So if they make one phone, it's four grand. To make four thousand phones, it's four grand. So this is where you want a slave drive, right? Don't worry about the ten-year-old boy building the phone. Just keep on whipping them and get more phones. How many smartphones should the company manufacture and sell to maximize profit? All right, everybody, and I took on Apple there. I see that I got to figure out the profit. Okay. So the selling price of the phone is given up there as a formula. So the selling price, which I'm going to call SP, so I keep track, is 130 minus a dime X, where X is the number manufactured. All right. Parts for each phone cost 60 bucks. All right. So the cost, I'm going to call it C, for every phone, all right, is 60X. You guys agree? Each, if you have one phone, it's $60. If you have 10 phones, it's $600. Right, each point is 60 x. How am I going to divide up the four grand a day? I think the four grand gets spread equally across the number of phones. If you have, if you make one phone because you have the worst day ever, that phone will cost you four thousand in labor. If you have two phones, each one costs you two thousand. If you had four phones, they would cost you a thousand. If you have x phones, it's four thousand over x. Guys, that's our cost function. The selling price was given to us, right? 
How do we figure out profit? It's just selling price minus cost. Now our beautiful P, profit, we'll do it in green, equals the selling price minus the cost. Right? Black minus red. Uh, for you guys taking a little bit of counting. All right. Well, let's group all this. No, I won't because my board's not working. I'll have to hang on. I'll group all this on the mouse. And now I will make a function now, I think, is what I'll do. And say that the profit is equal to 130 minus 0.1x minus 60x minus 4,000 over x. Guys, I want to optimize what? I want to maximize P. Always. Welcome to the real world. All right. We're going to maximize profit. So I want to find the local max and mins, right? I want to take the derivative of the profit function. It's already in one variable. The hard part of this problem, the really hard part of this problem is this. You guys agree? It's seeing the function and getting this to work out. So I take the derivative. P prime, profit prime, zero, negative 0.1. Negative 60. Now, someone at Albany or Monticello or Judah is saying, why didn't you combine like terms? Why bother? By the time I do it, right? Well, I'm going to keep on growing 4,000 x to the second. I want to set P prime equal to 0 because I'm optimizing. So I know where the derivative is 0. All right. So I think I can write this. I can go. You picture zero here, I think we get 60.1 cents on the left if you move it over, right? And everybody, I set P prime to zero. I moved the negative tenth and the negative sixty to the other side. Got X squared. Multiply both sides by X squared. Divide by 60.1. And I bet you I'm going to get not a integer answer. You guys agree? I bet you I get a non-integer answer here. Well, something's not working. You guys agree? Something doesn't make sense. I get a little bit. I got extend backs. I made a math mistake somewhere, everybody. I made a math mistake. It has to be. Each phone costs 60. You take away one, you get. I've made a math mistake somewhere. I hate to stop and pause because, guys, I got eight phones. There's no way eight phones is the right answer. I can stop here and just say I've screwed up, okay? Gotta be way more than eight phones. Guys, back up. I made a math mistake. I I agree that the cost per phone is right, four thousand. But the cost for the day is four thousand phones. X, the variable here, is in. Read what the X is. The X is not the number of phones. It's the number of phones manufactured per day. And look what the cost is here. Four thousand dollars per day. I don't need to divide this by X. This is my mistake. But that shouldn't fix it. It doesn't fix it. Because the cost per day then would be 60x plus 4,000, right? The number of phones, the selling price is still 130 minus 0.1. But that must all be over x. I don't know. Hang on, we can work this out. Well, the 4,000 is when the phone is created. Yep. All the things you collect for the show. So, wouldn't Yep. It 
this. The profit per day is going to be the selling price. Oh, we forgot to plot, hey guys, we forgot to multiply the, the selling price of each phone by what? The um, number of phones. Uh, I was taking one phone minus all the costs of the other one. So this screws up our formulas down here. I'm sorry guys, I made a mistake. I pulled the, whoops. This will teach me not to prep ahead of time. I gotta bring X in. I think I get 130X minus 0.1X squared minus 60X minus 4,000. I'll bring this up now. X negative 1 so you see it. Alright. Maybe this will make it a little better. I'm gonna see if it does. Let's do P prime now. Because now it's the cost for all the phones. You guys agree? The selling price of all the phones. The cost of all the phone ones. And I still don't think we need to do over X. I think that's a mistake now too because all the phones cost four grand, right? Do we agree with that idea still? Because it still says per day. When I get 130 minus 0.2X minus 60, that seems a lot better. P prime equals zero, I get 190. No, I don't. I get I get 0.2x equals 70, don't I? And I take 70 divided by 0.2, and I get x is 350 phones a day. Everybody, this is the hard part, and I didn't mean for this to happen, but it shows you what you have to do. All right. The hard part about optimization problems is making sure you get all the all the right information. And what I missed, the simple thing I missed, is that my ST was selling price per phone, and I have to multiply it by X to get the total amount of money we made. And then I screwed up on the second thing on the four grand per day. I was trying to make it per phone. We just need to leave it as a phone. 350 is the answer, because I, I, it gives the answer on the sheet I have. It doesn't give the work. Guys, these are hard problems. you got to practice. Even I make mistakes. But I knew eight phones wasn't right, and I wouldn't possibly leave that answer. If I had to on a test, you know what I'd write? I know I'm wrong. And where did I make my mistake? Not the calculus. I made my mistake in the algebra, right? Does everybody agree? All right.